If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, Wendigo Weekend. A compilation of terrifying stories and encounters with Wendigo creature slash cryptid, that are believed to be true, or so they say. The Wendigo. The Wendigo is a very real creature of the northern woods and prairies of northern Minnesota and the north central regions of Canada. The Wendigo is often encountered by hunters and campers in shadowy forests. But Kenora, Canada, is the place most known for its Wendigo sightings that have well continued into the millennia, earning it the title Wendigo Capital of the World. The description of a Wendigo is generally the same, incredibly thin, glowing eyes, long, yellowed fangs, and very long tongues. They are over 15 feet tall and have sallow, yellowish skin. The spirit is said to have a voracious appetite for human flesh, causing the disappearance of various forest dwellers. They're hundreds of years old. Each one was once a man. Sometimes an Indian, other times a frontiersman, a miner, or a hunter. The Inuit Indians of the region call the Wendigo by various names, including Wittigo, Wikio, and Witigo, but each of them is roughly translated to mean the evil spirit that devours mankind. Native American versions claim that the Wendigo once had been human but had been transformed into a creature by the use of dark magic. According to lore, the Wendigo is created whenever a human resorts to cannibalism. During some harsh winter, a guy finds himself starving, cut off from supplies or help. He becomes a cannibal to survive, eating other members of his tribe or camp. Cultures all over the world believe that eating human flesh gives a person certain abilities. Speed, strength, and immortality. If you eat enough of it, over the years, you become this less than human thing. You're always hungry. While, according to the early settlers version of the legend, the Wendigo would often be seen as an omen of death in the community, a Wendigo had allegedly made a number of appearances near a town called Rosesu, in northern Minnesota, from the late 1800s through the 1920s. Each time that it was reported, an unexpected death followed, and finally it was seen no more. It has been claimed that the Wendigo's full powers have never been recorded. From what we do know, the creature excels at strength and is a damn near perfect hunter. It knows every inch of its territory, every cave, tree, and bush. More than anything, a Wendigo knows how to last long winters without food. It hibernates for years at a time, but when it's awake, it keeps its victims alive. It, uh, stores them, so it can feed whenever it wants. It can also control the weather through the use of dark magic. Because of this, the Native American tribes have actively hunted the creature in the past. Me and my mom were coming from our aunt's house because she needed help mounting her new TV. So, on the way from the store, we stopped at our aunt's place, helped her, and went on about our business. Our aunt lives in this neighborhood that's out in the country, so there's nothing but miles and miles of trees with a few houses in between. Mom was the one that was driving, and we both saw this tall, lanky, white creature with the face of a deer, but we both knew it wasn't a deer. Mom started speeding fast as hell down the motorway, and what made this even scarier was that we were the only cars on the road. For a while, we didn't even say anything to one another, and she finally said, did you see that thing run across the road? I told her I did, and we drifted off into silence again. My family has lived in Iowa since July of 2017, and we live in a small neighborhood with a minimum of 25 houses that is surrounded by a forest. A year into living in Iowa, our dog was getting really old, so we got another dog, so our old dog has a friend. We named our new dog Tucker, and he is a very energetic dog with everyone and everything. Our old dog died a couple of months later, and Tucker was the only interactive pet we have. A couple of years later, my mom and dad got divorced, and she moved on to a guy who lives a couple of miles from our house. My mom and dad settled on a schedule for what day they could spend with us, while the other goes somewhere else for a couple of days. For context, my mom's side is native, I forgot what tribe we are, and we do believe in the lore of skinwalkers and wendigos. On one of my mom's days, she drives up this road, where it's surrounded by a bunch of trees, a couple of houses, and two farms. There is a hill on this road that she has to drive up, and as my mom drove up the hill, she saw something in a field near the neighborhood. What she saw was tall, gray-skinned, had deer hooves as feet, and it was walking into the woods. My mom was confused, and when she reached a stop sign, she looked back in her mirror and saw nothing. Now my mom was scared because she remembered all the stories of the Wendigo and drove off to our house. When she told me this, I was already scared because of the stories I've heard online. After this, I was extremely cautious when I was outside on my bike rides. Without thinking, I rode my bike near the hill where my mom saw the possible Wendigo. I brought my camera to take pictures of the landscape because it was nice out, 
but my paranoia was going off when I was near the field, and I always trust my paranoia. As I rode off, I felt like I was being watched when I rode past the field. Okay, so the only experience I ever had with a creature or animal that I couldn't identify has been on my mind and has been a very vivid memory my whole life. Later, I found out what we encountered, a Wendigo. This is what happened, about 8 to 9 years ago, when I was younger, me and my friend went to hang out at a park close to his house, no one else was there except me and him, and this was my first time being here. There was a small pond, a baseball diamond with a fence, a playground, and it was all surrounded by deep woods. We decided it would be fun to get giant branches and draw stuff on the baseball diamond afterwards. We would bang the fence around it for like a couple minutes straight, and it was pretty loud from what I can remember. We then heard wind, but not usual wind, but the sound of wind gusting through the forest behind the pond. This was during the summer, if I remember correctly, and there was a lot of foliage, so it was hard to see into the woods clearly. We then heard something big, like a horse, but fast, running through the woods right behind the pond, but along the way, it seemed like it was running around it. I saw a big white creature seeming to be 7 to 8 feet tall and probably weighing at least 300 pounds it sounded like a horse running, but lighter. It was super fast. I saw it through the pond weeds, it seemed to have fur, but I couldn't see its legs, head, or if it had a tail. There were too many trees and plants in the way. We dropped our sticks and ran to his house, which was in yelling distance, terrified. We told his family, and of course they didn't believe us. I haven't talked to him in years. I was 15 years old and lived in a farming town in northern New York. My father is a hard-working and productive member of society, even though I grew up fairly poor. We spent our fall season in the woods hunting for a hefty white-tailed deer to feed the family for most of the winter. We would usually go out at around 3.30 p.m., once I got home from school and he got home from work, and stay out until dark, which would come at around 6 o'clock. One night of the 2006 season particularly stands out in my mind. Fast forward to around 5 o'clock. As the sun got lower in the sky, the snow-covered wood took on a hazy grayish color, and it became increasingly hard to distinguish shapes, so I descended my tree to sort of refresh my vision. As I'm carefully and quietly descending, I hear a crunching sound coming from my left, just about the area where my father was sitting. I thought, awesome, we can get out of this creepiness now. So I picked my pace up, making as little noise as possible. When I hit the ground, though, all hope of going home shifted to worry. I looked over in the direction of the crunching of the snow and expected to see my father, instead, what I saw was the black outline of the biggest behemoth of a white-tailed deer that I've ever seen, about 100 yards out. With my hands shaking, I pulled my rifle up to align a shot, but it changed, like melted into a figure that was not like a deer at all, except for the antlers. It was bipedal and hunched over. I blinked and looked back through the scope because I thought it was some kind of illusion or something. It was not an illusion. It was gangly, hunched over and not moving, with fur all over and an elongated head with antlers. Still doubting what I'm looking at, I shouted hey with my sights still on it. It stood up, and when it did, I saw just how damn huge it was, probably around 7 feet tall or so and really skinny with long arms. Also, it had a snout like a deer and fang-like teeth. It startled me. I took a hurried shot and booked the duck out of there, not looking back. Then, about a quarter of the way home, I heard yelling, and three shots came from the woods. So I stopped and looked back for the first time to see my dad bursting out of the woods, yelling for me to run home. When we got there, we waited to catch our breath before going inside with my mother. While we were catching our breath, he told me never to talk about whatever I saw out there. I wanted to share this because a few months ago, a friend of mine asked me, have you heard anything about a huge black deer someone spotted on your road? Wendigo? A few months ago, around 4 to 5 a.m., I woke up to what sounded like my cat being attacked and dragged away into the woods. I got up to open the door to my tiny house, looked out the window, and called my cat. He didn't come, and I didn't see anything. My fiancé had gotten up and left for work at 3.45 am later that morning, I saw my cat Vishnu playing with my other cat, Mavis. A couple of nights go by, and I'm woken up to the sound being right out my door and it fading into the woods. This time, I stayed in bed. I set up a deer cam to try and catch whatever was making the sound, but nothing was caught on the camera. Then, a few days later, my fiancé is sitting on the porch relaxing at 11 p.m., and he looks over about four feet away and sees this pale creature on all fours. He went to grab his pistol to confront it, and it took off. He said he got a glimpse of its face, and the expression it had was like it was worried that it was seen. Ever since then, we have not heard or seen anything. 
I have spent the past two summers guiding canoe trips in the lake of the woods in Minnesota slash Manitoba, have had a few run-ins, and have heard many stories from other guides about their experiences. The Ojibwe have lived in this area for thousands of years, and there are many places that we cannot camp on because they are Indian reservations. I have heard this area referred to as Windigo country. I have plenty of stories that have been passed on by other guides, which are pretty terrifying. But I will just share the one experience I was involved in. It was me, another guide, and we had about seven kids with us on this trip. On the first night, we stopped after a long day of paddling at a campsite known as Little Triscuit. We had one camper with us who was somewhere on the autism spectrum and had big communication issues. As we were making dinner over the fire, he seemed to notice something in the woods behind us. He kept saying things along the lines of who is that man in the woods? And described it as a tall, skinny man that was all white. We assured him that no one was there, and we did a head count to make sure all the kids were here. So we checked it out and didn't see anything back there, so we just brushed it off and got back to making dinner. The same night, a different camper was in her tent by herself because she was the only girl on our trip. As me and my co-guide were starting to fall asleep, we heard her say, Gilly Vanilli, stop. We replied, what? We are in our tent, and she just brushed it off and went to bed. In the morning, we asked her what was up, and she said that something was shaking her tent, and she thought it was us. It wasn't a windy night, the boys were all in their tents, and we were in our tent as well. When we took her tent down and took the stakes out, two of them were completely bent at a 90 degree angle. We tested out the flexibility, and we couldn't get the thing to budge back. I've been in some crazy wind storms out there, probably with winds around 30 to 40 miles per hour, and I had never seen a stake bend like that. But we left Little Triscuit, and the weird stuff stopped happening, and we had an awesome trip. When we got back to base camp, I talked to another guide that stayed at that same campsite the night after, and without me saying anything, she said, there is some sort of big white creature at that campsite. She told us that she was going to the bathroom way back in the woods and thought that another camper had accidentally come to her bathroom spot and ran away, but when she got back, everyone was there, and no one had left the fire in the time since she left. There are much scarier stories and experiences other guides have been involved in with these spirits up here. This was my first, and hopefully I won't have any more. We try to treat the wilderness, the spirits, and the native culture with the utmost respect. This makes me feel safe, at least in my mind, from these spirits, as almost every other story I've heard has started off with someone disrespecting it or claiming that they don't believe it exists. When I was in my first year of college, I lived with my mom by myself. My dad had passed the year before, and we moved out of the house shortly after. I was glad because I had suffered a lot of paranormal trauma growing up there and was glad to get out. One night I was driving home on Highway 111 North after youth group, and I saw something that still bewilders me. It was lightly raining that night. Mist crawled across the road from the cow fields on either side. The lights from the few gas stations nearby were reflected in the wet asphalt. I was driving about three car lengths behind a dark minivan with nobody else in sight on the roads. All of a sudden, I saw the van swerve to miss something in the middle of the road. I was going too fast, and the road was too slick to miss it. All of a sudden I saw, framed in my headlights and silhouetted in the glowing red brake lights of the van, speeding away a tall, muscular man with the upper shoulders and head of a buck. It was like a minotaur, but with a deer head instead of a bull and glowing red eyes. I clinched and braced for impact and then passed right through the figure. It was like it dissolved right into the mist. I am used to swerving to miss deer at night, but I should have nailed this thing on the driver's side. Nothing. I was too afraid to look in the rearview mirror as I gassed it and sped home. I was only a couple of miles away, which was both comforting and terrifying at the same time. I raced to the door and locked it behind me. I told my mom, who laughed it off but was disconcerted at my pale, clammy complexion. I only later found in my research a description like what I saw. The Wendigo. A Native American legend was terrifying to me as a child, but I had never heard it described like this. I had never heard of any creature like this until that night on a dark highway 111 that I will never forget. Yes, it happened to my grandpa, so it is a second-hand experience. But he went camping with his Boy Scout troop in some woods near my home. The woods take up over 10 square miles. They were about 2 miles from a campsite. He said he woke up in the middle of the night to a rustling sound outside of his tent, and at first he didn't think much of it, he thought it was one of his friends or the troop leader taking a piss, so he went back to sleep. The next day in the morning, he asked the troop who woke him up to use the bathroom, and everyone said that no one got up last night, so he thought that someone was messing with him. That night, he was woken up again to the sound outside of his tent, however, his buddy next to him also woke up to it. My grandpa, thinking someone was prancing him again, 
wanted to find out who it was, so he and his buddy looked outside the tent and saw a creature walking around the perimeter of their camp. He thought it was a deer at first, and so as he and his buddy got closer, they started to notice more and more details. It had legs that looked like goats, long arms with claws instead of hooves, and the decaying head of a deer. They hid in a nearby bush, scared to even move. They lay there until it left, and they still lay there, not daring to move, until the troop leaders found them the next morning. When they told them what they saw, the other kids got so scared that they basically all forced the leaders to bring them back home. My grandpa says that you can hear it calling to you if you get close enough to the woods. True story or not? He could have told me that story to keep me out of the woods, or he could have told me the story to pass on the warnings to the next generation. Either way, I'm not going in those woods. In October 2017, my girlfriend and I were driving back home from a family gathering, and we both saw this clearly, and we both still have vivid memories of it. This pale white animal ran out of the tree line and leapt across the entire width of the highway in what seemed to be an effortless stride. Like this thing, it had an excellent amount of hang time as well. It had no fur, and it had this leathery pale skin with minor cuts and scratches, no tail, and kind of a long head like a deer or horse. We had no idea what to do, we just kept driving as it disappeared into the tree line on the other side of the road, and we were just in awe of what we saw. The worst thing is that literally a few kilometers before this, I got out of the car to pee, so we were a little freaked out. I've gotten a variety of answers from people about what I saw. Most locals think we saw a mountain lion, which is very rare in this area but has been known to show up. But as I said, this thing had no fur and had a long head, its legs were skinny as well. Someone said it was possibly a Wendigo, but I don't know anything about paranormal or cryptozoology. I was wondering if anyone had any insight on what we saw. Last summer, we were out in the woods, about 5 miles from our house, just taking a hike and fishing. Blowing off a little steam after work. So this would be about 6 to 7 in the evening. As we were getting ready to leave, my son saw something that looked to him like a human or deer thing. It appeared to walk on two legs. I did not see it, but I could hear something running through the trees. My son is 16, so he is not a little kid that would make up stories. Since then, we have talked to two others who have seen something like it. All from the same area. I should note that this area is known for Bigfoot activity. So much so that we used to have a local researcher that was funded and reported to Jeff Meldrum at ISU. So what is this thing? Is it good or bad? Are we crazy? This happened last year during the summer. I got home late from a party, and when I got out of the car, I heard it something at my chicken coop, so I went to investigate, and when I got to it, there was a coyote, so I chased it off, and it stopped in a little clearing and turned and looked at me, so I grabbed a stick and threw it at it, and it ducked and started growling, so I started screaming at it to go away and. Before my eyes, it started morphing into this large humanoid. I could hear its bones breaking for it to grow. I stood frozen in fear as it stood three feet above me. As it stood, I could see its jaw unhinge, and in a high-pitched scream, it briefly ran at me. So I ran up my driveway, thinking I was about to die. I looked back and saw it stop, and it got on all fours and took off into the forest. I haven't seen it since, but I don't go out alone at night now. I've done lots of research, and I can't find anything on it except for a skinwalker. They are not around the mountains where I live. I live in western North Carolina. It was mid-January a few years ago in New York. I always loved the winter because of how cold and snowy everything was, but now I can't shake the feeling that there was more than just wood and snow in a wintry forest. My family was upstate for the weekend to have some bonding. I just wanted to explore the forest. I was allowed to go out into the woodland by myself as long as I stuck to the path. I was out there for about 18 minutes before I started noticing something. I looked around curiously to explore the forest's beauty when I noticed a very awkward looking mound of snow, or at least I thought it was a mound. I looked at it closely, but it was too far into the forest for me to see any real features. I thought nothing of it and decided to go back home. After two minutes, I felt I was being watched and kept on looking around me. I convinced myself it was just squirrels, and I kept on retreating. I smelled an awful stench to my left, causing me to jolt to my side, looking for whatever was out there. That same mound was there again, but it looked like something else. It had these twisted bones extending into the skin and had pale white skin. Under extinct alone, I started booking it back to the house. I heard something chase me from the woods. Lucky for me, I had multiple first place track finishes, and I was running a straight, which in the end allowed me to get back home quickly. I got back into the view of my house and sprinted up to the porch. I looked back into the forest and saw the rustling of leaves coming to the edge. Nothing. 
It just stopped, and the stench faded away. For some reason, I never told anyone except my two best friends, who dismissed it as me ducking with them. I hope I can find more answers for whatever I saw that day. I think I may have encountered a Wendigo last night. Well, I live in the middle of nowhere, and the other day I heard some screaming from the forest, but I just wrote it off as the neighboring kids down the road, even though it seemed very off anyway. Last night at about AM, I was walking my sister to her car, and after we said our goodbyes, I was going to guide her. Out of my yard because it was raining, and I didn't want her to get stuck. Well, as soon as she turned on her car and her tail lights came on for a brief moment, I saw this thing. It was much taller than me, it had long arms, it looked human, but not at the same time, and even though I was only standing like 7 feet away from it, I couldn't make out its face at all. Then I blinked, and it was gone. I saw the direction that it ran in, or at least I think I did, it was a blur. I didn't sleep all night because of this. What do you guys think? Any of you remember Outdoor Ed? If you don't remember or just plain don't know, I'll give you a brief rundown. Outdoor Education, Ed for short, is a school camping trip that takes students to the woods where they can learn more about the outdoors. Okay, enough about that. On to the creepy. My outdoor education trip took me to the snow-infested mountains, and for the most part, it was completely boring, save for the occasional snowball fight. Then the last night occurred. I'll never forget the last night for as long as I live. Now, before that night, I didn't have any trouble sleeping, but the last night, it was like something was wrong. At first, I assumed it was just homesickness, first time away from my parents, but then I looked to my cabin mates and counselor, and from the look on their faces, I could tell they were feeling it too. It was tense for several minutes, and then, something started calling our names. It was barely more than a whisper, but all of us heard it. The voice was seductive and alluring, it made me want to go outside. But the small amount of common sense I had back then ordered me to stay put. My counselor did not feel the same way and left the cabin to investigate. We could hear him yelling from outside. Come one, guys, this ISNT funny. The kids are trying to sleep. I guess he assumed it was some sort of prank. After a few minutes of silence, he rushed back inside. There's something, someone, out there. Stay in here. He says. And he grabs something from his bag and goes back outside. Listen, this is your only warning. I have a gun, and if you intend to hurt these kids, I will shoot. Silence, then bang bang. I swear, it was the loudest noise I've ever heard. I could hear the other counselors come outside, and I could hear them talk. I can't hear what they say, but my counselor comes back and says that for the rest of the night we have to stay indoors. Eventually, sleep won out, and I drifted off. Next morning, as the students are boarding the buses to leave, we see police cars on the road and police officers talking to my counselor. Not too long after, my dad shows me the news, and I find out what my counselor saw. He described it as something barely resembling a human, taller than 10 feet, and with skin so pale you could mistake it for snow. That was all he could see before he fired his gun, and the creature ran off. Suffice to say, I've had nightmares about it, and now I'm forbidden from going on any more camping trips. Now that I'm older and a little bit, but not much, wiser, my best guess is that it was a Wendigo. But this was in Southern California, an unusual place for such a creature. So when I was younger, I was woken up by my stepbrother. He was crying and screaming for his dad. I had seven of their siblings in the home at the time, but everyone was fed up with their crying because it was early in the morning. So I was like, alright, let's go get your dad so we can all go back to sleep. Keep in mind that my stepbrother's room was downstairs next to our parents' room, but he came upstairs. I have no idea why, because he saw what I did, but, I from the bottom of the stairs, I can see a perfect view of our large glass sliding back door. Keep in mind that all of the lights in the house were off, and the back door lights were on while the curtains were closed. With that being said, before I can even approach our parents' room, I see a shadow of a large bipedal creature that is like deer antlers dangling from the roof that hangs over our back porch, either struggling to get up or down. I wasn't sure. Also, that roof leads to the upper bedrooms, it's only 7 feet. I would jump off it as a kid to escape time. My heart sank to my buttocks, and I grabbed my stepbrother's wrist and jumped in bed with my oldest sister. I never said anything because I didn't know what to think when I was 9. Any clue what that was? I stood face to face with a Wendigo when I was 7. This happened when I was 7 years old. I'm sharing because my older brother reminded me of it now that I'm 24, and now I can't get it out of my head. This was very traumatic for me because, after this event, a bunch of other things started to happen. 
This is how it started. Growing up and now, I live in a haunted state and live five miles away from the most victorious haunted forest. My mom used to tell my brothers and me about what she would hear walking by the forest, the murders that happened, and how she used to see Pukwudgies. My older brother, 11 at the time, let's call him, and I were watching TV in the living room. It was dark outside, it must have been a new moon. If you were sitting on the couch and looked to your right, you would see the glass sliding door, which viewed the backyard. Mind you, it was an acre of lawn, and tall trees lined the perimeter. I was tired and decided to get my ritual glass of milk before bed when I stood up and saw what was glaring at me through the glass door. It was tall, taller than the ducking door. It was skinny in the torso, but its chest was broad. It was white, with tall ears. I want to say it looked like the white version of Donnie Darko. I was about 15 feet from the glass door. I froze. It didn't move. It just kept looking at me. It could not have been anyone else because we lived in the middle of the woods. I started calling for my brother's name, but Dee wasn't answering me. I started to get louder, now calling for my mom. Her room was on the other side of the couch, so she was there in a heartbeat. She looked at the back door, looked at Dee, and then told me to just sit back down. I couldn't understand why I was the only one freaking the duck out. I laid on the couch, facing away from the glass door. Dee put a blanket on me, and we both fell asleep on the couch. Well, 2021, D calls me from jail, he's been in and out since I was 13, this is how the conversation went. D, hey, can I ask you something? Me, what's up? D, do you remember that night? Me, what night? D, that night, when you were freaking out, we were young. Remember that tall, scary looking shit that was at the back door? Me, I had a flashback of that night. D, look, I had a dream about it last night, and I wanted to tell you that I saw it too. I was too scared to do anything. Mom saw it also, the conversation ended because he only had so much time on the phone. I felt relief that I knew I wasn't just having a schizophrenic hallucination episode, but my body went numb from the memory of being so scared. I told my so about it, he's my best friend. My so told me that I came face to face with a Wendigo and that he wasn't surprised because of the small country town I lived in. When I looked up what a Wendigo was, my heart sank. That's what I saw. Now I think about it every day. It's been a year since I was reminded of it. I believe it still follows me. A few years ago, me and a couple of friends had an encounter with something I had never thought I would encounter. We have been trying to figure out what it is, as a different friend of mine and I have been having experiences recently that could lead us to believe that my theory of it being a wending or skin walker could be correct. I would love some help in figuring out what this thing is. It looks like a wish but has some tendencies that aren't similar to the behavior that would be expected of one. A few years ago, when this all began, I was staying at my friend's house, and one of her other friends was there too. This entire night was crazy because all three of us can see spirits, and we all have things that are attached to us. That being said, this entity is not attached to us, but we think it is attached to my friend's mom. But we had been experiencing things all night, and it was just our spirits showing off. Until later in the night, we were sitting in her living room, and her parents' room was right off of the living room. The door was cracked, and I was the first one to notice it. I sat there and stared for a minute because I was trying to figure out what it was. The next thing I knew, they noticed it too. It was so tall that it was staring at us over the top of the door and was hunched over. It had its hands over the top of the door, and they were long and bony. The thing that was really disturbing, though, was the fact that it had a deer skull for a head and red eyes. Seeing it was enough to make me uneasy, but at one point during the night, it rushed at us, and I felt it touch me. Fast forward to a couple months ago, and me and my other friend began having some experiences after we had begun to put some of the pieces together. It started with me getting no caller ID phone calls, which then turned into my friend getting them, which escalated into her friend getting them because of how often they were around us. In the midst of this, my friend had a very scary experience. She was at her apartment alone when she heard a knock at the door. Not wanting to open the door immediately, she looked through the window to see a man she had never seen in her life standing far enough away from the door that she could completely see him and as soon as she looked out that window, she made eye contact with him. She has told me that she just had a horrible feeling when she saw him, that he seemed really weird and off, and that his eyes looked lifeless. A few days later, I am sitting in my car outside of her place, waiting for her to get home. I had my window cracked and I didn't have any music playing, and out of nowhere I heard a man say hey to me, clearly trying to get my attention. The weird thing about this, though, is that it came from a very small wooded area next to her place. I heard it, and it sent chills down my spine, I currently live two hours away from where the original experience happened. 
My friend's apartment has a little wooded area outside of it, but when I say little, I'm talking about walking from one side to the other in less than five minutes. Like I said, it does have some tendencies of a wending or skin walker, but the thing that doesn't add up is the fact that we don't live close enough to a wooded area that I would think it would be a problem, and I don't know why it would be harassing my friend who wasn't there for the original experience more than it did me. I have spent plenty of time in wooded areas both during the day and at night, so it would have had several chances to try to lure me in, but it hasn't. If anyone could offer me some answers or advice, I would be very grateful. I live in a small town in the country, there are more cows than people, and some of the buildings are really old. This happened when I was about 8 years old, and this is the first time I've brought myself to tell this story, and I only have the courage because I'm far away from the trees. I lived in a valley, and the woods surrounded our house on all sides. Now, my entire family has lived in these valleys and hills for generations, and there are countless stories of paranormal things happening to all of us. Several strange things have happened to me, but this is one of the most terrifying. So, living in a small town in the middle of nowhere, there wasn't really anything to do other than hike. I loved hiking and would repeatedly walk in the woods for hours. There was an old story that my great-grandmother told me of a creature that lived in the woods and would stalk anyone who entered. As a kid, I thought, yeah, right, it was probably just a trick of the trees or something. But this day I stayed out a little later than I intended, and it started getting dark. Turning back, I began to walk towards my house when I heard a noise behind me. It wasn't uncommon to see a chipmunk or a bird, but when I turned around, there was nothing there. Shrugging it off, I continued, but the sounds got louder and louder. You could hear the leaves rustle and the branches snap behind me. I began to get scared. You always hear those stories of kids being kidnapped because they're alone, so I began to run. I was not the smartest because I tripped over a branch and fell, skinning my knee pretty badly. Turning around quickly, I thought I was done, but there was nothing behind me, just trees and leaves. It was dead quiet, even the wind wasn't rustling the leaves, and there wasn't a single bird singing. Feeling pretty silly, I got up, brushed myself off, and turned to walk the rest of the way home when I saw it. To this day, I don't know what it was. It wasn't a bear, it wasn't a deer. I live in the country, and I know what they look like. This thing was in the distance, staring at me. It was covered in fur and had these piercing white eyes, and what looked like horns or antlers were protruding from its head. It knew I saw it because it smiled, and I swear all of its teeth were sharp fangs. I instantly wanted to scream and run, but when I looked into its eyes, I was frozen. I couldn't even blink, let alone scream. I could only stand there dumbly as it got closer and closer. The closer it got, the more bony it looked. Its limbs were long, it looked starved, it smelled like rotting flesh and I felt like crying, but I couldn't. I honestly thought I was done until it stopped. Its head tilted, and it just looked at me, then turned and walked away. When it left, I could move again, and when I thought I could walk without falling, I ran home. I shut myself in my room and bawled my eyes out for hours. I didn't go back to the woods for years, and even now I'm weary of it. I don't know what it was or why it was there, but I got the message loud and clear, stay away. That happened well over 10 years ago and was really the only major experience I had in the woods until recently. Growing up, I've seen more strange things in the woods than I can count. But most of them aren't anything to be concerned with, except recently something dark has been moving in the woods. It looks like a man sometimes but will change shape. It ducks in between trees and hides just on the edge of where the woods are. I thought I was crazy, but my close friends have seen it too. This thing seems to give off an evil feeling. One of my friends was pushed down the hill and swears that she saw this dark entity out of the corner of her eye when it happened. Another of my friends swears they heard laughter coming from the trees. This thing gives me the creeps. I'm not sure if this shadow man is the same creature that I thought was a Wendigo or not, but it definitely isn't friendly. Does anyone have any idea what this thing is? Is it the Wendigo, or are they two different entities? I think my sister and I dealt with a Wendigo as kids. So basically, my biological dad had bought this little ranch home up on a hill, and the entire hill was timber, and supposedly, according to our dad, there was an old cemetery somewhere in the timber, but we never actually went to it because we were 9, me, and 7, ls. But okay. So when we first started going out there on the weekends, we were iffy about it, but nothing too scary happened. My sister and I went into the woods and were playing around, and we saw what we thought was a wolf just sitting there, not looking at us but just sitting there, and like idiots, we decided to just lay on the ground and hope it didn't see us. We lay there for hours, the sun was setting by the time I decided to go home. So we looked, and it wasn't there anymore. So we went home and told our dad, and he assumed we were making up stories, so we let it go. The next weekend we went up there, 
and I began losing a lot of teeth, teeth that weren't even lost, if y'all could see my yearbook picture by the end of that summer, I only had four teeth in my mouth, and my older stepbrother wanted to watch Ghost Adventures, so we did. Afterwards, my sister and I were spooked, so we all decided to sleep in the living room. In the middle of the night, our stepbrother wakes us up and says, do y'all hear that? And we heard scratching on the side of the house, right outside the living room window. So our other way older stepbrother goes out there with a gun and comes back in and says, nothing was out there. Must have been a coyote, so we let it go. Around this time, my sister and I became absolutely terrified of the far back shower, and we cannot remember why. I think it was because there was a window in there that faced the woods. Sometime after that, all four of us, me, my sister, and our older two stepbrothers, were in the camper just playing music and stuff, and the oldest brother stopped playing music, and we could hear whistling and howling, and again he goes, damn coyotes, and my sister and I both were like, they can whistle? And the boys ignored us and continued playing music, so we moved on. That night we were trying to sleep in our bedroom, and we heard whistling out in the distance, so I shut our bedroom window. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night because I felt something staring at me, and I was too scared to face the window, so I pretended to be asleep, hoping whatever was there would think I was asleep and leave me alone. I swear I heard something in my ear just say, boo, and I screamed absolute bloody murder. We didn't go up there for two weeks after that because I was terrified, but then my dad wanted to see us badly, so we ended up spending the last few weeks of summer up at his house. We started noticing small, weird things like rattlesnake rattles in piles on the driveway, and my dad thought we were doing it, but we are absolutely terrified of snakes, so we didn't. We'd occasionally hear whistling when we were in our treehouse in the middle of the woods, and every time we'd book at home. And almost every day I was losing a tooth. One time my dad came home from work after the sun had set and we had already eaten dinner, so we were in our rooms playing about to head to bed, but he came inside really angry and threw the boys' bedroom doors open and asked which one of them was just outside, and they both said they were both inside playing Xbox, which they were. He then proceeded to punish the one closer to our age, sorry, I'm trying to keep names out, and said, he just got out of the truck and somebody kept whistling at him, and it got really annoying because he asked them to stop and they didn't, so he thought it was one of the boys because my sister and I didn't know how to whistle. Two days after that was the last day my sister and I spent at that house because everyone but me, my sister, and our oldest stepbrother went to the grocery store, and then our stepbrother went to go mess around in the barn. My sister and I were playing, and she stopped and said, did you hear that? So we stopped playing, and we heard our names in what sounded like our mom's voice coming from somewhere outside our room. Our mom lived an hour away, and we didn't see her car in the driveway, so we slammed our door shut and hid in our closet. I never went back after that. And we have never experienced anything like that since. I'm not sure what we experienced. My sister said today she believed it was a Wendigo, and I've heard something about them but I'm not entirely sure what they are, etc. I was always told it was a Native American tale, and we do have some Native Americans in our family line, but barely any. So please let me know what y'all think it was or is. It was a deep, dark night. There was this guy that went in the woods on the search for the mythological creature called the Wendigo, known to stalk its prey and lure its victims to death. He had his flashlight shining through the pitch blackness that only lit him a small path, while his surroundings were still not visible, with little sounds coming from what seemed to be all around him. Then, from a distance, he heard the loud banging of something he couldn't quite make out and the screaming of a woman. He rushed over to the noise to help her out, fearing she was being attacked by the Wendigo. His breathing was heavy, and his low visibility didn't help a single bit. Just then, the moon comes out of the midnight sky, lighting up a tree with blood on it and leading towards a lake where the sounds were the loudest. The man dashes over to the river and catches a glimpse of something that seems to be dragging through the deep forest. Without thinking, the man swims across the river in order to save her as fast as possible. Soaked and fatigued, the man slows down as the screams get further and further away until they stop completely. He rests at the river bank, hoping to catch his breath, which gets interrupted by his guilt over not saving the girl. Then he hears a female voice behind him. It kind of sounds like the girl who was screaming from being attacked. He turns around, and his face drops and his heart pounds as he sees a tall, malnourished, pale creature, the Wendigo. The man's mind only had one thing on it, run. Still fatigued from the chase, he limps desperately towards something that can give him the slightest amount of hope. He comes to the realization that it was the Wendigo who copied the girl's voice and lured him into the long chase to weaken him and make him easy prey. Then he sees a cabin in the distance and gathers all his determination to sprint to it. He reaches it, and it's abandoned. He slams open the door and gets inside. He locks the door to temporarily stop it. Within his brief moment of calm, 
he spells something rotting. He looks over towards the living room and sees piles of dead bodies, some half-eaten, he was in this lair. He hears a loud thud from upstairs. He ducks under the bodies, thinking he would be able to disguise himself in the smell. But when Digo searches around and eventually leaves. The guy gets out of the body and looks around, nothing is in sight. He leaves the cabin slowly, but surely. He runs towards what he thinks is an open road, dazed and confused. He hears someone call out to him for help, and without a second thought, he runs towards it. He hears sirens, trips, and hits his head. After coming to his senses, he doesn't hear the sirens anymore or people calling out to help, it was a trick of his own mind. He hears a noise from a tree, looks up, and sees the Wendigo making direct eye contact with him. He starts to cry as the Wendigo jumps down and twists his head all the way around, breaking his neck, ripping it off, and bringing it back to its lair. Possible Wendigo Encounter I live in Jersey, in a somewhat wooded area by the bay. There is a small patch of wood that separates my house from the home behind us that you can easily see through to their backyard, and our neighbors on both sides have fences. The one on the left has a full fence that spans the length of the property, and the neighbors on the right have a fence that goes halfway down the property so you can see into their backyard. We have never had any issues with the wildlife aside from some coyotes in the area, but they have never entered our property. I usually have to leave early in the morning before the sun comes up, and this particular morning was no different. I walked out to my car and heard what I thought was my next door neighbor, which I found odd as I've never heard them awake this early. Before I entered my car, I heard a noise that sounded like my neighbor saying hey coming from the right side of our backyard. I turned my head to look, and I saw two glowing eyes looking back at me. I could tell it was tall, but I couldn't make out any other details, and I knew it wasn't human. I never lost eye contact with it until I got in my car. I tried to pull my car so the headlights could shine on what I saw, but it was gone. Now, every time I go out to my car at night or early in the morning, I hear strange noises coming from the woods around my house. Some of the noises sound exactly like those of small children. I'm not sure what I encountered, but it scared the hell out of me. Wendigo scare? I just wanted to share this story and see if something like this has ever happened to anyone else. Just to start off with some background, my group of friends had started making a nasty habit of joking about the Wendigo. My friend Stacy and I didn't for a while just due to the fact we believed in the supernatural, but after a few months, it grew on us, and not knowing that the Wendigo can actually be triggered by such things, we joined in, the biggest mistake ever. I had just moved into the country, and we enjoyed making trips into town to have a few drinks, which is about a 30-minute walk from my place to town. At night, the first 10 minutes after leaving the bridge that leads out of town are pitch darkness with no streetlights. After that, streetlights are very sparse which can cause a very creepy walk back without anything happening. So with that all in place, let's continue. Stacy and I begin our night by walking into town. Get some beers. And have some fun. Shortly into the night, something slightly strange happens. We receive a phone call from her little sister at home, who is crying and scared because she saw someone sitting on my friend Stacy's bed. She calms her sister down and asks her cousin to check her room for her sister at home. Everything is fine. No one was in the room. Also, Ghosts and weird things happening at her house were very common, so a sighting like this was strangely regular. We continue our night. Into the night, we meet a guy who seems pretty cool, he's riding a bike and tells us he's pretty drunk or something. We decide to hang out with him for a bit, wanting to meet people in town. A ways into our hangout, we are sitting on a park bench, and the guy is lying on the ground in front of us. Suddenly, my friend stands up and says it's time for us to go. I shrug and agree, and we get going. After getting away from him, she tells me how the guy bit her ankle, the day after she had teeth bruises on her ankle. Kind of flustered, the guy would do that, so we continued our walk out of town. Finally, we pass the bridge, which is our last source of light for the next 10 minutes. We turn on our phone flashlights, and we turn on some music, trying to ease the spooky feeling of being in pitch darkness in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, we hear a voice beside us, and we both jump. It's the same guy on his bike. He asks us if he can follow us until we reach the fork in the road, we need to go left, and he needs to go right. Still slightly creeped out, but almost at the street lights and the fork in the road, we agree. Regardless, he had to go that way, and so did we. After a bit of walking, we finally reach the fork in the road and the first street light. We sigh with relief, hoping he would leave. But he turns our way instead of going the way he needs to go. Now, at this point, we are thoroughly creeped out. We try to ignore it and keep walking holding our breaths, wanting to reach the next street light, which is some distance away. Finally, after what felt like forever, we reach the next street light. 
which is also, for some reason, a small graveyard, I hate my area. Once we reach the street light, the guy stops dead in his tracks and doesn't move any further past it. As we turn around, the guy looks like he has suddenly passed out on his bike, his head down and shoulders slumped. I was about to say something to him, but my friend stopped me and said we really needed to leave him. I agreed, not wanting to be around him much longer either. After a few seconds, I take a peek over my shoulder, he's gone, vanished. The worst part is that even if he had turned around and started pedaling as fast as he could, we still would have been able to see him some ways down the road. I panicked, but I was also slightly relieved that he wasn't there anymore. We continue walking, trying to pretend we aren't creeped out. Walking quickly from street light to street light. Finally, we reach my way. My way is a long road of darkness, we hadn't put any lights in yet to try and brighten it. We began to walk slowly, holding our breath. Some weird feeling of dread came over me the closer and closer we got to my house and the further into the driveway we entered. I don't know what came over us, but the sudden feeling of you need to run. And you need to run fast. She came over to us at the same time. We bolted at the exact same time without having to say a word to each other. We got to my front door, and I unlocked it quicker than I ever have before. We get inside. Just as I'm about to close the door, this hellish scream or growl, whatever the sound is, comes out of nowhere. I could hear it getting close to the door in steps. I slammed the door closed, locked it, and dropped to the ground in fear. We both sat there holding our breaths, scared to even breathe. Fast forward a couple weeks, and me and my sister had forgotten about what happened. Suddenly it came up in conversation, and we tried to find the sound we heard. Nothing worked, we looked up every possible animal, even animals that weren't likely. We spent an hour on this. Until we decided to look up the sound of a Wendigo, it was the only sound that fit perfectly. We don't joke about it or talk about it now. I won't. I hate to. Even writing this made me feel scared to bring it up. I want to share an experience I had while training with my NG unit at FT.MC Koi, why? I am a member of the NG in Wisconsin. In 2014, my platoon decided to conduct nighttime land navigation at FT.MC Koi from 2030 to 30. While the army is typically all about buddy pairs, nightland navigation is one of the few cases where we can do things solo if we so choose. I have done plenty of nighttime navigation before I step off alone, compass, map, and headlamp in hand. For those who do not know, land navigation involves seeking out markers on a course by plotting their coordinates on a map and moving there via a terrain reference and compass. At night, this is typically done without light as much as possible. When light is used, it is red. This minimizes damage to night vision. Obstensibly, these methods also keep you concealed in a tactical environment when employed with noise discipline. I bring this up so you can understand a few things about my circumstances. I was moving through the woods while making a token effort to be hard to spot or hear. The woodland I was in was part of a larger forest system, but it was frequently traveled. That night, we had some 15-ish soldiers clomping around. My illumination was a toggleable headlamp, but it was toggled to be red when turned on. To cycle to white light, I have to turn it off twice, the cycle was off, solid white, off, flashing white, off, solid red, off, flashing red, off, and solid white. My assigned points will take me to the other side of the course and back. A good hour and a half of walking as the crow flies. They're more or less in a straight line, so I estimate two and a half hours out and back. I know if I come back too early, I might be given another set of points. So I resolve to walk out, take a break for an hour then mosey on back. The first half of this goes as planned, I get my points without much trouble and wind up sitting on a hillside at around 10 at night. It's cloudy, but the moon is full. I can see wellish when the sky is clear and poorly when it's not. Occasionally, I see a red light bobbing in the distance below me. Once, a pair of platoon members pass down the hill from me, using white light to try to read their map. I startle them when I ask if they need help. At the end of my break, there's no more motion in my area. Most people had likely already walked out and back, or they were too lost and took the handrailing road home. I'm feeling pretty at one with my surroundings, having sat in the same spot eating stale skittles for a good long while. Owls hoot, trees sway, and all is well. I trot down my hill and step through some brush. I'm in a clearing where prairie meets forest. There are some dead trees in the area, one of them is split halfway up. At the top, 15 feet, I can make out a head and shoulders silhouette against the clouds backlit by the moon. I walk up to ask how they got up there, and if they're stuck, when the shadow twitches, and I get the impression it's turned towards me. I stand there looking at it, and it's maybe looking at me. The situation feels off, but I'm not going to let a battle buddy punk me. 
I ask if they need a hand. Mid-sentence, the moonlight comes back. It's clear that the thing on the tall stump is not a soldier. This moonlight glimpse is the best look I get at the thing. It looks like a stretched out, bald person. Its long arms are clutching the stump. I can't make out the face, but it looks pinched. By that, I mean I couldn't see its eyes or mouth, like they were small and in the middle of the head. It's skinny, like it hasn't eaten, but it's tall and obviously strong to have made such a vertical climb. It was definitely facing me, it probably was the whole time I was in the clearing. Maybe since I came down the hill. Maybe my speech startled it. I swear loudly. It rapidly scurries down the trunk. I flick on my red light and catch it on all fours, moving towards the brush line in the direction I'm heading. Automatically, I keep toggling the lamp to be in white light. That means it goes off, then flashes red. In the flash, I see the thing at the wood line, but I think it's flipped around and is backing in, probably to keep eyes on me. In the few seconds it takes for me to get to the white light, it's gone. I scan the tree line, which is silent. When it moved, there was a scraping noise, plus the woodland brush is dense. If it was still running, I would hear it. I reason that it must have stopped. It must still be watching me. I fumble out my knife and keep looking around the woods in front of me. After ages, I start inching along a perpendicular path to my initial route of travel, an angle that will link me up with the hardball road that runs up and down the side of the course. Once on the road, I can take it back to where my platoon is parked. My major problem is that the road is a 10-minute walk from my current position, mostly woodland. That can't be helped. I have to get out of the clearing first. My progress on that front is painfully slow. I'm fighting my natural urge to freeze in place like a deer in the headlights. After sidestepping a good 10 meters, I hear a corresponding rustling and think I see movement. It's enough to get me to turn and bolt right into a downed log, which trips me. I scramble up to my feet and look back to the wood line, where there is an audible commotion. I glimpse a leg and ass moving back into the woods. At this point, I'm done with the whole situation but don't want to run again. I start power walking to the road, turning to look as much as I can while seeing what the thing is doing. Over the movement of my own kit, I can hear it moving along with me in parallel. As I near the end of the clearing, I think I hear it picking up pace, as if to cut me off. I made the decision to sprint. When I enter the woods, my path is clear, but I think I can hear it in my periphery. I don't stop, and I run hard until I hit the paved road. I bite it hard a few times along the way, but recover with a frantic speed I cannot consciously replicate. Once on the road, I run perpendicular to the forest until I don't think I hear it anymore. I'm winded from my breakout run. From the middle of the road, I have good visibility and decide to walk to catch my breath. It's been quiet for a while. Then I hear a branch move around 30 feet in the air from the woods I had just fled. I snap my gaze up and see a pale, ovular face, half in shadow, peeking at me from around a trunk. I take off again. After way too long, I make it back to the headlights of our LMTVs. It's 1215. What happened, cadet? Did you get lost out there? You're covered in mud. Did you fall down? Why are you out of breath? I got lost on my way back. Yeah, I rolled down Pike's Peak. I ran to get back in time. Lol cadet was lost. I knew better than to claim I saw a monster. Already, my reaction had left me feeling foolish. In the years since drilling at FMC, I have never experienced anything like that again. McCoy does not have a history of disappearances, as far as I know, neither do the two closest towns, Sparta and Toma. I've done nighttime navigation alone a few times since without issue. This is less from courage and more from my deciding I must have misinterpreted the situation. After diving into the paranormal, I'm coming around to the idea that I should trust my own account. Maybe the world is weirder than I thought. Possible Skinwalker slash Wendigo? A while ago, like about six months ago or so, I moved into my husband's house. I didn't really notice anything at first, but after the first few months went by, I can definitely tell that something weird is going on here. One night, my husband and I got into a mini argument, and after we had both calmed down, he went to use the restroom. While he was in the restroom, I heard someone, definitely a male voice, yelling, like very angrily, and banging on a door. My husband eventually came back in the room and heard the banging himself, but he says he didn't hear the yelling. My husband went and opened the front door to check what was going on, but no one was there, and there wasn't anyone at the back door either. Fast forward a couple of months. We were in our bedroom, and it was storming really badly this particular night. All of a sudden, the whole room started vibrating, and we kept hearing this weird noise come from the living room. It turns out that it was a speaker that somehow turned on, and the noise was vibrating against the wall. 
we don't have any idea how the speaker turned on because it wasn't even on, like the knob that turns it on wasn't even turned. And now for the reason of sharing this. Tonight, like not even 10 minutes ago, my husband and I got into a fight, and he left the room. While he was gone, I heard someone banging what sounded like metal against metal right outside the bedroom window. My husband came back into the room and heard the same thing, but when he went outside to check it out, it had stopped. I've been feeling uneasy here for a while now, but all this happening makes me feel very uncomfortable. It almost seems like something is taunting me in some way. My friend comes over quite often and says that she also feels like something is off here, and the other day, when she was backing out of the driveway, she saw something peeking out of the woods in her backup camera, and it somehow just disappeared. I don't know what's going on, but everything seems to happen at night, and I'm honestly trying really hard not to freak out. Does anyone have any thoughts about what it could be or any advice? I'd gladly appreciate it. This is my most recent Wendigo encounter in DeWitt County, Texas. January 12, 2019 around 8 p.m. now, I'm going to be honest. I chose to go out on this particular night because my town was having a little ghost tour at the haunted hospital. I was lonely and wanted to at least see others having fun. It was 8 p.m. when I left the house and planned to be back within an hour. I have a routine of circling my town in the evening because I just like patrolling, and there's always something creeping about after nightfall. I made my way to the haunted hospital, and once I got there, I saw flashlights inside the windows and heard laughter. That's nice, I thought. Seeing others have fun made me smile and got rid of some of the loneliness I was feeling. This was the halfway point of my walk, and I started my second half by heading home now. There were some woods on the opposite side of town now, but nothing impressive until I got to the last quarter of my walk. Now I was passing the baseball field on my left with a large wheat field on my right. This wheat field used to be a large extension of the woods but was cleared out for growing wheat. I continued again and crossed the small bridge that went over a creek and passed another section of woods. I was now headed towards an old metal building that has recently been turned into a place for making gates and fences. It was about 9 p.m. now. This building had two small white houses beside it and a stretch of dirt road wrapping around the backside of it before returning to normal asphalt roads. Now at night, this place seems pretty scary but this was one of my favorite places to hang out at night and is a normal path I take my walks through. As I was coming up to the dirt road, I saw a very tall, 8-10 foot pale figure with lanky arms almost dragging the ground, about 40 feet ahead of me, briskly walk from the white houses to the woods. I stopped walking. What was that? I thought. Its size confused me so much that I had forgotten my previous encounters with a smaller version of it. After a few minutes of standing there, I convinced myself to continue walking forward. I mean, I was an adventurous person, and there's no way I was just going to turn tail and go home when I just saw something so odd and out of place. Not even 15 seconds into walking forward, this sudden heavy sense of dread overcame me like a giant weight crashing down on my shoulders. My instincts were telling me something was really, really wrong. I turned my iPhone light on and shined it at the woods. Nothing, I kept walking while keeping my head on a swivel, looking in all directions, to keep my surroundings in check. About the fifth or sixth time I looked at the woods, I saw it. A huge, bleached white humanoid figure crouched on all fours. It was easily still five to six feet tall, even though it was bent over. Its black eyes paralyzed me. It had a big, round, bald head and an extremely emaciated body, void of all hair, with very long, almost dislocated looking arms and legs. Its legs were like flamingo birds at the knee as it bent backward instead of forward. I took all this in in a matter of seconds. Suddenly, it reminded me of a praying mantis when it swayed back and forth while staring as if deciding whether to attack or not. This broke me out of my trance, and I ran as fast as I could. I didn't look back until I had run a block. Out of breath and scared as heck, I finally took a glance back. I didn't see anything in sight. I didn't hear it chase me either. Maybe it was just stalking those people in those two little white houses and was waiting for me to go away to go back to its business. Maybe it didn't want anything to do with me. But that wasn't the end. I got home, took a shower, and turned out the lights before I hopped in bed when suddenly there was something tapping on my window. Tap, tap, tap. Three taps and nothing else. I laid in bed that night, wondering whether it had followed me home or not. A string of bad luck ensued the following weeks. I was constantly burning stuff on the stove that was relatively easy to make, and I was an excellent cook on top of that. My dog started going nuts at night, growling and barking at night in the living room and at the front door, which she has never done, as she is the quietest, sweetest dog you'll ever meet. And finally, I got deathly sick for three weeks straight, with no sure sign of what I had gotten. 103 fever, vomiting with blood, diarrhea with blood, sneezing, coughing, 
sore throat, migraines, nerve spasms, stuffy and dry nose, it changed constantly, severe stomach aches, aching all over really, especially in my bones, other lesser entities taking advantage of my state and trying to latch onto me, and slight insomnia. I've had smaller strings of bad luck before, after hearing its mimicry trying to lure me into the forest or seeing it one other time, but I didn't see any details, but nothing ever this extreme. I don't go into the woods alone anymore. I am a logger in Northern British Columbia, Canada. I am an avid hunter, and I have spent many nights hunting alone. That being said, quite a few years ago, I was working on a broken down skitter in the dark after everyone on the logging block was gone, changing a blown hydraulic hose under the cab, when I felt like I was being watched. The feeling continued to get worse and worse, so I was on edge and continued to work on replacing the blown hose. On every trip for tools to the service truck and back, I would scan for eyes in the nearby tree line, about 25 meters away, with my flashlight. Nothing. I continued to work on the pain in the ad SS hose that you literally have to dive your head and upper body under the cab to reach, and so your legs are stuck up in the air and feeling vulnerable. The feeling of being watched gets more intense, all the hairs on my neck are standing, and I hear a two-tone whistle from far away. It was almost as if it were wind, it was so far away, but it was flat and calm that day. Also, there was about six of fresh snow on the ground. I pushed myself out from under the skitter and looked around quietly with a flashlight for eyes in the tree line and down the road. Nothing. I had one side of the hose fitting to remove still, and it was the easier side and higher up, so I wasn't s over the tea kettle removing it. I put my head back under the cab and quickly began to spin the fitting loose. The feeling of being watched was so bad that every hair on my body was standing, and then I heard the same two-tone whistle very loudly in the tree line directly behind me. I had the hose off at the exact same time, so I whipped myself out of under the cab and turned ready to throw down with a 1 and 5 eighths wrench in my hand, yelling, all right, where the FCK are ya? Nothing, no one there, no tracks, no eyes, no wind, nothing. The flashlight I had was more of a small floodlight for working on repair stuff, so it didn't light up inside the trees. The next day it had snowed another 6 or so, but I went and hiked the tree line with a 12 gauge and 7 inches and 3 slugs ready to go. There were no tracks that I could see, no perches on the trees where snow had been pushed off, if it was a bird. Nothing. 